Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I want to show you something pretty cool. I'm going to show you a relationship between the Fibonacci numbers and the prime numbers. Okay, so firstly let's recap what the Fibonacci numbers are. It's a sequence of numbers. We give the first two, sequ uh, first two numbers in the sequence, sorry, 1. So the first term, f1, is 1. f2 is also 1. And then every other term in the sequence is given by this recurrence relation here. fn plus 2 is equal to fn plus 1 plus fn. So from the third term onwards in this sequence, you can work out what that term is by just summing up the two previous terms. Okay, so for example, f3 would be equal to the sum, uh, the sum of the two terms before it, so f2 and f1. So that's 1 plus 1, so that's 2. Then f4 would be equal to f3 plus f2. f3 we just worked out is 2, and then f2 is 1, so it's 2 plus 1, and that's 3. f5 would then be 5, f6 would be 8, and so on. What we want to do today is we want to prove that if n is bigger than 4 and fn is prime, then it follows that n is prime. Okay, so it's a pretty cool theorem, which I'm going to prove, um, but it's quite cool how prime numbers somehow find its way into this cute little recurrence relation. Anyway, let's get stuck into the proof. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we want to do to prove the main result is actually state and prove a quick lemma. So uh, the lemma is that the n plus t Fibonacci number, so fn plus t, is equal to f of t plus 1 times f of n plus f of t times f of n minus 1. So here, t and n are positive integers, and in fact, n has to be at least 2 for this uh, fn minus 1 to make sense. Uh, but anyway, this thing holds uh, for positive integers n and t, and n has to be bigger than or equal to 2. So I claim. Now I'm going to prove it. But the proof I'm just going to provide is sort of a sketch proof, just sort of the first few arguments. I'm just going to show you that it holds for the first few values of t, then it's not too difficult to prove for yourself, or just spot that it's going to hold for all values of t. So if you want to go into it uh, with a bit more detail, you can. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of just using an inductive argument to finish off the proof. Anyway, what we're just going to do is show that this holds for the first few values of t, and then we'll move on. So the proof, which I'm going to put in inverted commas, um, let's just look at the first value. So let's look at, well, by, uh, by definition of the Fibonacci numbers, we know that fn plus 1 is equal to fn plus fn minus 1. So if we just look at when t equals 1 in this equation, let's see if it works. We get fn plus 1 on the left-hand side, and that equals f, or t plus 1, so that's going to be f2 times fn plus f of 1 times fn minus 1. But we know f2 and f1 are both 1, so that we can just rub them out, essentially. And then we get fn plus 1 equals fn plus fn minus 1, so just as we want. Great. Now let's look at the case t equals 2. So then we get fn plus 2. Oopsie daisy. fn plus 2 equals f. Uh, we know that that is equal to fn plus 1 plus fn. But now we know that fn plus 1, we can write as this thing here. So this is equal to 2fn plus fn minus 1. So I'm just replacing fn plus 1 here with fn plus fn minus 1. But then we get 2fn, so 2fn there, and then plus fn minus 1. And then now we're going to look at fn plus 3. Okay, fn plus 3 is just fn plus 2 plus fn plus 1. But now just sort of using this thing here and this thing here, fn plus 2 plus fn plus 1. Uh, is just going to equal this plus this, so 3fn plus 2fn minus 1, and perhaps you can guess what the ne uh, what fn plus 4 is, it's going to be 5fn plus 3fn minus 1, but let's just check that, fn plus 4 is equal to uh, fn plus 3 plus fn plus 2, so this plus this, so it's 5fn plus 3fn minus 1, and you can see the coefficients of fn, are the Fibonacci numbers, but starting from the second one, so 1, 2, 3, 5, the next one will be 8, and so on, and the coefficient of fn minus 1 goes 1, 1, 2, 3, and the next one will be 5, so the, these are the Fibonacci numbers exactly, uh, and this is sort of one off the Fibonacci numbers. So you can check for yourself that this thing holds, certainly for the first few values, but then using a simple inductive argument gives you that this lemma holds uh, for all values of t. Anyway, I'll leave that as the proof, or if you want to finish it off yourself, that's an exercise. Anyway, let's move on to the next step of this big proof. Okay, so I've just written up the result that we just proved, and now I have another lemma that we're going to use to make our big conclusion. 
I claim that for any natural numbers, n and m, so any positive integers n and m, we have the fn, the nth Fibonacci number, divides the nmth Fibonacci number. So when you multiply n and n together, so fn divides fnn. Okay, and we want to prove that this holds for any natural numbers m and n. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove this by induction on m. So we're going to fix the natural number n and then proceed by induction uh, on n. So in the base case, when m equals 1, this is just saying fn divides fn, which is obviously true because fn equals fn. Okay, so now we're going to assume that it holds for m equals k. So in other words, for some k in the natural numbers, we have the fn divides fn k. And now we claim that it holds for fn uh, k plus 1. So let's use the inductive step now. So we want to now look at when m equals k plus 1. So in that case, we'll get fn of k plus 1 like that. So that is just, of course, f n k plus k, or plus n, sorry. Okay, so f n k plus n. But then using our lemma up here, so we're replacing n with n k and t with n. This thing here is equal to f of n plus 1 times f of nk plus f of t now, and t is n, remember, so plus f of n, and then n minus 1 is nk minus 1. Okay, so we get that this thing here holds. So f of n uh, times k plus 1 is equal to f of n plus 1 times f nk plus f n times f nk minus 1. Now, f nk minus 1 is certainly an integer, so this thing here is a multiple of f n, but also, but from our assumption step, because fn divides fnk, it follows that fnk is a multiple of fn. So this thing here as a whole is also a multiple of fn. So this is a multiple of fn. This is a multiple of fn. So when we add up two multiples of fn, we're obviously going to get another multiple of fn. So this thing here is a multiple of fn. So then this thing here is a multiple of fn. In other words, fn divides fnk plus 1. Okay, and that's our inductive step done, and that actually proves our lemma here. So now let's move on to the final stage of this big proof, showing that if fn is uh, prime and n is bigger than 4, then it follows that n is prime. Okay, so now we move on to the main proof of the video. We claim that if n is bigger than 4 and fn is prime, then it follows that n is also prime. Okay, and to prove that, we're going to uh, prove by contradiction. So suppose for contradiction, n is not prime. Then of course we can write n equals a, b, where a and b are proper factors of n, so neither a or b equals 1 or n, so they're positive integers between 1 and n. And we can assume without loss of generality, a is less than or equal to b. Okay, but because uh, they're both positive, uh, sorry, bigger than 1, we have this thing here, a is at least 2, and b thus must be at most n over 2, um, because otherwise they multiply to give us a number bigger than n. Okay, so n equals a, b, and we have this inequality here, now, I also claim that b must be strictly greater than 2. Why is this the case? Well, if b equals 2, because obviously it's greater than or equal to 2 by this thing here, if it's um, equal to 2, so if we have equality, just replacing b with 2 there, we then get that b is 2, but we also get from this inequality here, a must also equal 2. So if a equals 2, b equals 2. So when you multiply them together, uh, you get 2 times 2, which is 4. But n, of course, is a, b, so then that would mean n is 4, but that would uh, contradict this thing here because we're assuming n is bigger than 4. Okay, so it follows that b is at least, uh, sorry, strictly greater than 2. Or I can write that then as b is at least 3 because we know b is an integer. Now, we're going to use the result we just proved that fn divides fnm for any positive integers n and m. So I'm going to let n equal b and, nm e uh, and m equal a. It's probably not the best notation because we're using n here. Nonetheless, fb divides f a b, but of course a b is just n, so we've got the f b divides um, f n. But because b is at least 3, what's the third Fibonacci number? f 3 is just f 2 plus f 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So b is at least, uh, sorry, f 3 is at least 2. So this thing here is at least 2. So we found a factor of f n, uh, such that uh, it's at least 2, but because fn is prime, the only factor of fn that's at least 2 is fn itself. So it follows 
that FB must equal FN, and in other words, B equals N. So we have then, all of this co concludes that B equals N, but that contradicts this thing here, because we said that B is at most N over two, so we found our contradiction, and thus, if Fn is prime and n is bigger than 4, then n is prime as well. And that's the proof done. So let's put a little box there. That's an awful box. Um, you may be wondering what happens in the case n equals 4. And this is just to do with uh, when this thing here equals 1. So if you have a factor of a natural number that's 1, you can't really tell if it's prime or not. And if you look at what uh, f4 is, um, it's going to be uh, f3 Obviously, f4 is equal to f3 plus f2, and that's, of course, 2 plus 1, which is 3. So, indeed, f4 is prime, but uh, 4, of course, isn't prime. Anyway, that's today's video done. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.